My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. <laughs> Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show? Hey, guys. It's a Dork Addendum 2. Let's try this. Here's a letter that I got from uh, a woman named Han or Hane page in Belgium and her husband is a big fan of my podcasts she sent this to me in June of 2012 and she wanted me to give him a shout out on his birthday for his 30th birthday in June of 2012 I just want to say Han Hane Page your husband whose name by the way you do not give me happy 32nd birthday actually I guess I don't ever read these out loud and I I think I resp- I know I responded to her. I sent her an email back saying, I don't know what a dork addendum is in 2012. It's 2014, October 4th, and I just recorded an episode. But let me read this from Han Page, who loves her husband. I hope they're still together and happy as clams. Uh, are there clams in Belgium? My name is Han, and I am from Belgium. It might be Hane. Eh? I don't know. My husband is a big fan of your podcasts. He really loves your show. He has some dull moments during his job as a train con- conductor where he needs to be on standby in case another train conductor needs to be replaced. During those moments, he listens to your podcasts and you brighten up his day. Frequently, he startles his colleagues by suddenly laughing out loud. All right. I have never listened to them, she then goes on to say. So I'm not sure how the whole podcast thing works. Maybe she's listening now. In Belgium, it's quite easy to contact your favorite radio DJ and ask him to address one of your loved ones during his or her show for a special occasion. I'm not sure that is done in podcasts. If it is, I'd love it if you could mention something about him or simply send him my love at the end of one of your shows. His birthday's coming up and he's turning 30 on the 1st of July. Next to that... I have to travel to the U.S. for my job rather frequently, and I always try to find something to surprise him with while I'm away. It would be the best birthday present and surprise I can give him if you mention mention anything about him. If this is something that is absolutely not done, then please accept my apologies for asking. In the meanwhile, I'll start with ordering one of your T-shirts for him. Kindest regards, Han. Hane. Well, as we can see, it is done. And it's only taken two years and four months for me to get that birthday uh, shout out to that guy. It's a pretty good one, right? Oh, Mike Meisner wrote me as well back in uh, 2012. He's the quiet guy. Uh, he wrote, loved the episode. I don't mind laughing at things that you find funny. I think there's a vast majority who agree. Oh, it must have been the episode with Aaron Foley because he, he mentions his dream scenario. He would like to win the Stanley Cup finals, parenthetical, he writes hockey, for the Detroit Red Wings, and then all the players, past and present, congratulate me. Awesome. Just saying. Quiet, Mike. All right, Mike. Uh, That was nice of you to send that to me back in June of 2012. What else happened in the summer of 2012? June 5th, a woman named Jennifer, with a great Polish last name, um... Just listened to the Tolkien Professor episode and really enjoyed, even though I read Lord of the Rings a few years back. Actually, it was between the Two Towers and Return of the King movies because I couldn't wait a year to find out what happened. Oh, spoiler alert, Gandalf lives! Anyway, uh, anyway, just wanted to drop you a line and say, Squee! The Tolkien Professor and Jackie Cage should both like Harry Dresden. And I do. It took a second, but I do. I just reread all the books about a month ago and really enjoyed them. Is there a way to leave a comment about a particular episode of The Dork Forest? I couldn't figure it out, so I'm sending an email instead. Keep up the good work, and when I have some money, I'll plan on donating. Sincerely, Jennifer. Well, thank you, Jennifer. And I think you did donate, and I appreciate it. Um, There isn't a way. I turned off the comments because I was getting a lot of spam, and it was just me and Todd Mason going back, quite honestly. You can uh, put a note on iTunes, and I read those. Uh, eventually, when I run out of these, I'll be reading current emails from people if, if the dork addendums continue and everybody is still on board. Um, other than that, I you can join the Ranger page on Facebook and I read those comments. Hey, P- Ranger page, I think it's Thomas Kirshner started a book club at Goodreads, Ranger of the Dork Forest Book Club. So if anybody wants to do that go and you're part of goodreads they just i think finished ready player one but i think it's going to be ongoing i'm just going to lurk 
because I've already read Ready Player One. And uh, and I think I, I've expressed my opinion about it. It's awesome. It's a great episode, too, with Ernest Klein. Ernie. Ernie Klein. That's what he did when he did a spoken word thing. Um, yeah. And so that was that uh, particular letter. How about this guy named Michael? Sean, he would like me to interview a guy named Sean Cullen. He's on episode 112 of Comedy Film Nerds and has revealed a dorkish side. Ah, I know Sean Cullen. I could, that's an attainable goal, Mike. A guy named John Miller. Back, I've never had Sean Cullen on uh, two years later. June of 2012, John Miller writes, Hey, did you want the Dork Forest name on Twitter? We never did get a chance to talk about it. Let me know. Oh, that's a guy. See, I have a, there's, I have Dork Forest podcast on Twitter, in addition to Jackie Cation on Twitter, and I'm never going to use it. So I, I just emailed him back and said, no, I'm good. He, and he offered to give it to me. He didn't, he didn't want it for anything. Um, I can't imagine. He didn't, he, yeah, he even says, he sent me another email. I never meant to take your thing. Uh, it was undoubtedly and subconsciously inspired by your act. There you go. And you could just, uh, an unintentional error correct. Let me know if you change your mind. I don't. I don't change my mind, John Miller. You're good people for offering it, but I don't want another Twitter feed. You're all good. And uh, <laughs> and he would like me to come to Marietta at the Adelphia Music Hall. John Miller and I talked for quite some time in June of uh, 2012. And then what happened? Oh, there you go. Um, there's a nice woman named Lisa who got her shirt. A woman named Terry. Oh, woman named Terry Kukaka. Kukaka? Kuk I pride myself at getting these last names right, by the way. I think, because I, I grew up with so many uh, Polish names and German names that I, was, that I actually learned how to pronounce things pretty well. And, but this one is stumping me. It's Kukaka. I'm a jackass. Anyway, Terry, you're good people. It's June of 2012. She sent me a chicken recipe, and uh, it's braised chicken. I'm not that great with with uh, with uh, with braised chicken, but the first thing is a large package of skin-on, bone-in chicken breasts and thighs. And I have this to say, Rangers, yeah, bone-in, skin-on. That's where all the flavor is. You don't want to eat the skin? You want to debone it after the cooking of it? That's fine. But the reason that boneless, skinless chicken breasts have to have all that seasoning and, and oil is because they are flavorless, hunks of meat. So it's baloney. Anyway, she wants me to braise. She wants me to do this salt and pepper the chicken in batches in a Dutch oven. Once the chicken is all brown, set it aside. Uh, saute the vegetables. A seasoning again with salt and pepper. Use the water from the vegetables to scrape up the brown bits. The Add the chicken back in. Chicken stock. Oh, it's a stewed chicken. Not a huge fan of stewed chicken, but it does sound lovely. Bunch of chicken, a medium onion, celery, carrots, chicken stock, flour and butter for the roux, salt and pepper, and virgin olive oil. That's all good. Ooh, Hans back. Hans back. <laughs> she wrote again at the end of June. His first name is uh, Cohen. His It's Cohen Page, and his actual birthday is the 1st of July. And she's excited I wanted to do this. Hey, I was a good egg. I said I was going to do something. And um, so let's do it. I mean, it's two years late. I don't know that I ever did do it. God knows. And um, But I'm glad, Cohen. Uh, I'm going to say happy birthday three times then. Happy birthday again. Ju <laughs> June. It's great. Now, look at this. Jumping to June of 2013. Maybe I'll save it for Dork Addendum 3. What do you think? I think we're six minutes in. Oh, my God. We're nine minutes in. Somebody else wanted me to go. Th uh, oh, I know. It was Thomas Kirchner again. He's like, well, what are you reading? Well, I just came from a week. I did Zanies in Chicago. And then I visited both my family in Minneapolis and my dad and my brother and his family in Milwaukee. Bookended it with a lot of siblings. I saw uh, two of my brothers and my sister in Minneapolis. And then I saw my brother and my dad and uh, in Milwaukee for a couple of days. My father's much better. Thanks for uh, thanks for your good thoughts. And uh, he's back to being genuinely irritating. And I recorded an episode of The Dork Forest, which if I ever can sit through it again, I will release it. But here's what happens when I visit uh, my family. I end up reading romance novels. 
Right. It's like it's like it's toddler like. I end up it's something to read and reread. And so here you go. I read uh, a Mary Jo Putney. I I read uh, in four days. I read seven of them. Yeah, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to tell you what they're all about because I skim them. I look for good parts. Good parts don't necessarily mean sexy parts, though they sometimes mean sexy parts. Uh, they usually mean because they're mostly because I read re- Regency romances. The traditional Regency romances you might know would be Jane Austen and. Um, uh, Georgette Heyer, those are they're 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 the Merchant Ivory films are sort of Georgette Heyer would make excellent movies by the way, I don't know who's listening who wants to make those movies but uh, they're sort of a comedy of manners kind of things, and they're all set around 1814 when there was no king, there was a a, a boy king and uh, there was a regent a prince regent. Uh, my knowledge of the history of the time is sketchy because it is based on. Perfectly nice history majors writing romance novels. So it is uh, sketchy at best. Anyway, a Mary Jo Putney, a Mary Ballow, another Mary Ballow, another Mary Jo Putney. Oh, Stephanie Lawrence. Now I brought that one with me because uh, that's a reread, folks. I really like Stephanie Lawrence. Uh, Julia Quinn and Amanda Quick. Here's the thing. Let's go first to Amanda Quick. Not her real name. I know everyone's shocked. Her real name is Jane Ann Krenz, K-R-E-N-T-Z. And she uh, has been writing romance novels forever and has started writing paranormal mystery novels. Holy crap-tastic, Batman. Uh, Yeah, they are just okay, and I thoroughly enjoy them. So I read Quicksilver, an arcane society novel. A lot of talk about the paranormal in those. The, the Mary Jo Putneys, I wrote, I read uh, part of what is called the Lost Lords series. Of course, it's a series. They saw what was happening in science fiction and romance novels are like, uh, let's do this. I think actually Stephanie Lawrence might have been the first one to do it. She did all the Sinster novels. That's their last name of all the, the handsome fellas that are involved. Uh, Sinsters, C-Y-N-S-T-E-R-S. Uh, they're very, uh, they're pretty sexy. They're pretty sexy ones if you're looking for something sexy to read. Uh, I, I brought with me Scandal's Bride, which I believe is the second or third in the series. The Mary Jo Putneys are the Lost Lords, and I read two of the four or five out of order, and it turns out it didn't matter. Didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter at all. So not quite a wife and uh, no longer a gentleman. There's uh, so, some negatives going on there. I read uh, Mary Ballow. I like the ones that are kind of funny and they're kind of sweet. And then um, Mary Ballow, usually super sad. Like there's like a misunderstanding. Hey, I got an email. Uh, there's some misunderstanding. And then... Um, yeah, then shit goes down, and uh, you find out that uh, there's been a misunderstanding. It turns out they all end up happy at the end of it, right? Who doesn't love that? So the Mary Bellows was a la- at last comes love. This too was a series, if I if I remember correctly, and it might be part of at last comes love and seducing an angel. What I've noticed about all of these books, or at least the Mary Bellow and Mary, yeah, just Mary Bellow. She, on the covers, I don't think it's her. I don't think it's her fault. But none of the women have heads. They have bosoms, and they have uh, some cleavage. Uh, They're bodice rippers, old-timey bodice rippers. And, uh, yeah, but the top, like, they're cut off at the nose. So they don't have brains. So they couldn't do that thing on The Simpsons where we check in what they're thinking about, like Homer does. Uh, Ballow, she uh, tends to cut off people's hair. And Quicksilver, oh yeah, no head. No head uh, on uh, Amanda Quick. But Julia Quinn, that's an entire person. That's an entire person uh, called the sum of all kisses. The Bridgertons know the Smythe Smiths, do you? Julia Quinn is the most consciously trying to be funny of them all. And she's and she's not, I mean, it's not comedy, uh, it's not stand up. It isn't, you know, uh, I don't know who to compare it to, but, but they're always those of a good heart and they're kind of goofy and they're, um, and they, and they're good. They're good for killing, 
Killing Times and Making Me Not Snap at My Family. So those are the seven books that I read. Um, oh, this is a sad sack one, too. Hugh Prentice. Eh, whatever. It was, it was okay. These were just okay. I'll tell you something. You want a you want a sexy book? Go with the Stephanie Lawrence is I guess what I would suggest uh in in that world. I also googled I googled something and um found out I think it was like top regency romances. And weirdly enough Georgette Hire wasn't on there, but like Pride and Prejudice was. And yes, Jane Austen is great. But more people should read Georgette Hire. There's not there's no sex. I mean they they might kiss at the end of it, but uh if they're smart and funny they're really genuinely funny. And Julia Quinn's not not funny. Talk about double negatives. Um, but you know what I'm saying. So that, well, that was my dorky week, you guys. And I'll leave it at that. Dork Addendum 2. <laughs>